Hey everyone, welcome to this morning's webinar on ChatOps. My name is Jason Hands, and I am the DevOps Evangelist here at VictorOps. Uh, so more or less that means that uh, I'm here to help my team as well as, as well as others just like you understand and adopt DevOps methodolo methodologies including ChatOps. Real quick, I'm just going to go over today's agenda. <clears throat> um, so we're going to start off by giving you just a brief introduction to ChatOps, including the origins of ChatOps. And then we'll move on to the tools that you're going to need to begin uh, taking your first step down the path of ChatOps. Uh, following that, we'll cover sort of the obvious or most um, important benefits of ChatOps. And then after that, um, I'll show you a few examples uh, of some different scripts and some different things that you can do with ChatOps, um, followed by a couple of different limitation and concern ideas that I've had and that I've talked to a lot of different people about. And then I'll go over just a, a, a brief kind of getting started uh, slide that will kind of get you at least a few ideas on how you can begin uh, taking your own actions towards getting ChatOps set up. And then after that, uh, if there's time, uh, we can actually, I'll just give you a, a link and a couple uh, different ways that you can reach out to me so that you can uh, submit some questions. I'm happy to uh, engage in either a conversation over email or Twitter. Uh, I love the topic of chat ops and I look forward to uh, talking to any of you that may have some questions or would like to discuss that. So with that said, let's get started. Um, first of all, I'd like for you to, um, right now, ask yourself this question. What do you or your team uh, find that you're doing over and over again? Now, what are you doing today that you find yourself repeating? And is this something that uh, you know, maybe we can have a bot do for you? It can be something simple or it could be something a little bit more complex, although I would recommend starting with something simple. Um, so anyway, just start to think about that question as we move on. Uh, through this webinar, and then we'll kind of return to this a little bit later once we get to examples and uh, touch on that again. So the term chat ops was originally coined um, by GitHub uh, in late 2010 to describe their growing culture of putting tools in the middle of the conversation. Uh, this was an effort to monitor and control infrastructure and operations from the convenience of a chat room. And additionally, it helped them centralize the conversation by driving everything that they were doing uh, right into chat. And in this image here, you can see in the lower right, uh, that's a picture of Hubot, who we'll talk more about here uh, in just a little bit. So that's a little bit of the origins on where the term chat ops came from. Um, but additionally, I wanted to sort of bring up that, you know, chat ops is, is sort of a subset um, topic underneath the DevOps umbrella. And so I'm sure many of you have heard uh, the acronym of CAMS, which is sort of the four pillars of DevOps, um, of culture, automation, measurement, and sharing. And I just want to highlight the fact that chat ops plays a, a big role in the effort towards DevOps the desire to automate um, much of what we do, as well as measurement and, of course, sharing, um, is, is a big part of just DevOps in general. And ChatOps will help you um, definitely quite a bit in your efforts to achieve that. So let's talk about the tools <clears throat> that you're going to need in order to start, uh, like I said, taking your first steps down uh, the path of ChatOps. Now, you know, ops and dev and actually many different members and areas of, of our teams, we're already in chat or in a chat room discussing all kinds of stuff that we're seeing and doing with the tools and services that we're using uh, on a daily basis. So the idea is that rather than hopping back and forth between those different tools and working basically within a vacuum, we've decided to inject all of that back into one place. And in order to do that, there's a few tools that you're going to need uh, other than just the chat clients. So I've got those listed here, kind of the high level uh, three main things that you're going to need in order to begin uh, implementing chat ops within your team. 
And those are chat clients, obviously. And I've got noted there that not just any chat client, but it needs to be a chat client that provides uh, a channel or a room so that more than just you and one other person can hold conversations. Um, other than a chat client, you also need a bot. Qbot, who I mentioned just a, a minute ago, is one very well-known bot, but I'm also going to uh, list off a few others here in just a few minutes. And then, of course, scripts are going to be very important because the bots aren't that useful unless they have instructions on what, what it is that you'd like for them to do. So let's talk about the chat clients. Um, the three that I have listed here are you know, the three most widely used and, and, and I would say most well-known within sort of the DevOps space, especially when it comes to the idea of chat ops. And the reason being is that all three of these provide the opportunity for you to create a channel or a room where your entire team can all be involved in the conversation. Uh, additionally, I, I'd mentioned IRC is still fairly popular, and there are other uh, chat clients that are being used for chat op. Flowdoc, for example, is one. Um, but I wanted to keep it simple and just provide sort of three main uh, most well-known chat clients that are being used within uh, the chat ops kind of space. So those are our chat clients. And then here are sort of the three main bots that I'd like to mention. And of course there are others that are available. Um, these are just the three most well-known ones. And so <clears throat> let me start by saying that when I say a bot, what I really mean is a chat bot. And a chat bot is something that sits in your chat room and listens for commands and then executes those commands. And by and large, the most well-known and most widely used bot out there is Hubot. And Hubot is, is an open source bot that was originally developed and provided by GitHub. Uh, however, on top of Hubot, which by the way is a Node.js application that runs CoffeeScript and, and JavaScripts, uh, we've also got um, another one that is called Lita. And Lita is a Ruby bot. So if Ruby is sort of more your thing, you may be more interested in, in giving Lita a try. And then last but not least, we've got Ur listed here, and Ur um, is a Python bot. So again, if Python is sort of your preferred language, um, you may want to consider looking into Ur. So scripts. Scripts are, um, you know, essential, obviously, in this uh, world of chat ops because bots uh, themselves are pretty useless if they don't have instructions on what it is that they're supposed to do. Uh, like I mentioned before, Hubot accepts CoffeeScripts, uh, Lita is Ruby, and Ur is Python. So you're going to have to have some sort of scripts that give step-by-step -step instructions on what it is that the bot is supposed to do for you when you ask for it to execute a command. So, and we'll see some exact uh, or some example scripts uh, here in just a little bit. So those are the three main sort of tools that you're going to need in order to get started with chat ops. Let's talk about the benefits of chat ops. Right away, you probably can start to see the, how the idea of chat ops can help. Um, but I thought I'd at least mention sort of what I believe and, and many others that are using chat ops believe that these are the three main benefits to uh, you know, sort of getting chat ops going within your team. Uh, sharing learning and speed are sort of, like I said, the three main ones. I'd also throw in transparency and visibility, but honestly those may be just sort of subsets of sharing. So let's talk about those a little bit more in depth now. When it comes to sharing, um, you know, essentially what we're doing here in chat ops is we're turning a chat room into a multi-user terminal. And this is allowing everyone in that room to see and execute important commands, making those commands uh, immediately accessible while creating a level of transparency across the team. So, for example, new hires, uh, they're going to learn commands by seeing current employees execute those commands right within their chat client. Uh, and you know, by watching what other members of their team are doing, it's very easy and very quick to sort of pick up and learn how to do different things within your team. You're, you're creating this situation where you're teaching by doing. Speaking of kind of learning, um, you know, first of all, let me just say that you know, wikis are, are very useful in some cases, but oftentimes teams um, 
you know, we, we don't do a very good job of sort of updating those wikis and making sure that they are up to date with all of our different procedures and, and processes. Um, and so what happens in a lot of cases is that we sort of just pair up, you know, a couple of people within your team will get together and then one person will just sort of watch over another person's shoulder to kind of take notes and learn uh, how to do different things. Well, I don't think, you know, too many of us would, would agree that, or too many of us feel that it's, it's nice to have someone watching over our shoulder. In fact, I would say that most people do not like people to hover over their shoulder, even when it's just in, in training. It's just something sort of uncomfortable about it. Additionally, and probably more important in this uncomfortableness of someone watching over your shoulder, is that in this day and age, many of our teams are distributed. So it's very likely that most of your team isn't even in the same location. So sitting down and uh, talking uh, or working with each other and having one person sort of take notes over another person working within terminal isn't always going to be an option. And so another thing, you know, by sort of doing all of this within a chat room and everybody gets to see what's going on, you have this historical record of what happened. And, you know, not, just, not necessarily just what happened, but also when it happened within your environment for others to go back and learn from. Uh, people can then ask questions without necessarily bugging other busy engineers. You know, if you just sort of lob a question out into the chat room, uh, anyone who's a part of that chat room can respond with, that, um, with an answer to your question. You're not necessarily bugging or being intrusive to anyone else on your team. And people are learning processes and commands basically as others are work or as others are working. Uh, Jesse Newland from GitHub, um, who has been a very big proponent, and you can find a lot of different information and videos regarding chat ops uh, that Jesse has put out. In one of his um, presentations that he gave, uh, he made an excellent point that everyone is pairing all of the time. So again, everyone is just sort of learning by watching and seeing what others are doing because everybody's in the same space within a chat client observing what's happening. So learning is a great byproduct of chat ops, but really the ultimate goal here is to, uh, really the ultimate goal in, in DevOps, or at least one of the main goals in DevOps, is to improve the speed of deployment and management of infrastructure and code. Um, as well as visibility of events, not just within the team, but for everyone to see. So when we're talking about chat ops, the fact that everything is just immediately available in terms of what's being done, that's one area or one aspect of speed, but also just the fact that we're able to run commands and uh, initiate executed commands uh, right from within chat, we're actually speeding up that process. So if you think about it, you know, which is faster, running a long stream command from your terminal or maybe just entering in a few words um, from within your chat client? And I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, well, not everything I do can be done from command line. Well, that's true, but how many clicks does it take for you to find information on what you're looking for within a particular service? And additionally, how many clicks does it take for you to share that information with your team? By building tools and executing commands in a chat room, that can be automated by a bot. Communication doesn't become an afterthought to the operational processes, but it's actually now core to how you operate. So, for example, if you want to deploy code, you just type that command into chat. And if you want to take a server offline or maybe bring a server back online or reboot your Apache, um, you just type that command into chat. If you want to merge a git pull request into master, you, again, you just type that into chat. So it's, you can start to see how this is just quicker, you know, you, even if it's not that slow of a process or it doesn't feel like it's that slow of a process for you to do within terminal, just the small time that it takes for you to hop back and forth between terminal, between your command line interface, that's actually, you know, again, it might be minor, but it, you can start to see that it is quicker to just do it all from within your now multi-user uh, terminal, which is just your chat client. So that, now we've covered the benefits, uh, sort of the high-level benefits of chat ops. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at a few examples. So, and by examples, uh, I'm not quite to the point where I'm going to show examples on, on uh, specifics of what you can do with chat ops. I'm actually wanting to show sort of old methods or actually kind of current methods for many uh, on what chat kind of looks like. 
So this is a very common conversation. And what we're looking at here is me reaching out to a teammate, Dan, in, in this example, and asking Dan if he sees uh, this spike on a particular server. And Dan comes back and says, no, I, I didn't, but, uh, but let me check. And then comes back and says, yeah, I, I do see what you're looking at. I asked Dan at that point, do you think we should let Mike know? And Mike is sort of our lead infrastructure guy here at Victor Ops. And he comes back and says, yes, I, I think that, you know, Mike would like to see this. Let me take a screenshot and I'll, I'll share it with him via email. And then I come back to Dan and say, do you think there's anyone else that might be interested in knowing this information? Dan uh, more or less agrees with me and then says that he will uh, share that with everyone um, via email. So uh, honestly, this is a very common conversation uh, on chat. There's really nothing all that out of the ordinary about this conversation. Let's look at another one. So in this conversation, I've reached out to Dan and I say, my code is ready to push when, you're, when you are. Dan then responds and says uh, he will commit it uh, here soon. And then I come back to Dan and say, we might want to sit down with Nick, who's a new employee here at Victor Ops, and show him how to do that. And Dan agrees with me and says he'll try to schedule some time uh, to show Nick how to do that. And then I bring up the fact that you know Nick is, is new to the company, and I bet that there's probably a lot of other things that we should be um, teaching him and showing him how to do. Dan agrees, uh, but states that there's a wiki out there for, for many of the things that we do, and he's going to see if he can find that and send that over to Nick. Again, this is a very common conversation, nothing all that out of the ordinary about it. Uh, the only thing that might be a little bit out of the ordinary is that right off the bat, I tell Dan that my code is ready to push, um, when actually, you know, maybe me as a developer, or at least a part-time developer, I should be able to push that code on my own. So keep that in mind uh, in terms of what it is I'm requesting someone else to do for me uh, as we move forward. So when we take a closer look at this kind of older method of chat, um, it's important to note that both of these conversations are just between uh, myself and Dan. There isn't anyone else who can see this conversation. Um, and you know, because of this, I'm sure many of you that have been sort of following the DevOps uh, methodology or DevOps, DevOps topics, the term silo comes up all the time. Well, in this particular case, Dan and I are siloing so bad right now because no one else gets to see this conversation. I mean, of course, we could copy it and paste it into something and then share it, but right off the bat, just, in a, just sort of in its natural state, this isn't something that anybody else gets to see. So it, we're not sharing um, and we're not being transparent with the rest of our team. So let's return back to that question that I asked when we started is, well, what do you do over and over again? What are you or your team doing over, over and over again? And is there something that maybe we can start automating and start having a chat bot do for us? Um, so maybe you have uh, thought of a few things as we've been moving forward, but if not, uh, no worries. We're going to move on to some examples now. Now to be perfectly honest, there are many, many, many examples already out there. Um, there's a number of repositories that are currently hosting uh, scripts that have been written by a lot of members of the community. I've provided a few uh, links here that you can go out and check out some of the existing scripts. And um, for posterity, I went ahead and just put in a few examples. I'm not going to read them all. You can go through them uh, yourself, but I will just list off a few. Um, you know, some of the things that you could be doing right from within your chat client is fetching logs. Uh, you could be killing jobs and processes. You could be um, tracking customer signups. You could be deploying code and, uh, you know, even things like rebooting your server. So those are very basic ones and obviously, you know, a lot of the different things that you're probably thinking of on your own is going to be very unique and very specific to your team or your own environment. Um, with that said, there are going to be some um, scripts out there that have been pre-written that you can probably just slightly modify to work for your, uh, work for your team. Uh, specifically, the ones that um, may have to do with GitHub. You know, there's, when it comes to just chat ops type of scripts that you can do for GitHub, there's a ton of them out there, obviously because 
Qbot was developed by GitHub, you're going to find a number that are specific to just actions that can be taken within GitHub. And I've got a few of those listed over on the right hand side of this screen. And those would be something like opening and closing issues, uh, also commenting and listing issues, and then things like merging pull requests. So this gives you sort of a high level um, idea of just different examples that you could be doing, but really we're just scratching the surface in terms of what it is you, that you could be doing uh, within chat offs. So now I'm going to show you, and I understand this is probably difficult to see on your screen, and I've got a link here at the lower right that will take you uh, directly to this script if you'd like to take a closer look at it. Uh, but this example script is showing us um, the code for uh, essentially showing the GitHub status and messages. So I'm just going to move on to the next uh, slide here so we can kind of break it down a little bit and, and see what's going on. So what actually uh, this script is, is allowing is for three different commands to be run. We could type in hubot github status or hubot github status last or hubot github status messages. And each of those uh, different commands are going to provide different results. Um, in my example, if you look at the top, from within chat, I have requested Hubot to get me the status of GitHub. So by, you know, by just typing in Hubot GitHub status, Hubot then um, detects that I have requested some, something from Hubot, and then it replies back and, say, and gives me the information that I'm looking for. So Hubot sees that I've asked um, for GitHub status, and then goes out, finds the script that's related to what I'm asking for, executes that script, and then returns the results right within chat. So Hubot has come back and given me the information that the GitHub status is that there's a new file out there as of 116 seconds ago. So again, this is a very, very basic thing that you can be doing. Um, and of course, you know, some of it would need to be modified if this is something that you'd like to use. But hopefully you can start to see at least at some degree what it is that you could be doing from within your chat client. So now let's go back and sort of look at um, this conversation um, that we had earlier, but instead of it being in a siloed um, kind of vacuum between just Dan and I, let's move, let's see what it looks like when we've moved that into an actual chat client that provides the ability for multiple people to be involved. So in this case, we're now actually um, in a chat client such as let's say HipChat or Slack. And so we've moved all of that conversation into a room where now everybody on our team can see that. So that's sort of step one when it comes to chat clients and, and actually chat ops in general is moving those conversations into somewhere uh, where multiple people can see that. So I think everyone can probably agree graphs are pretty cool. Um, managers and executives love graphs. Um, they're very useful uh, when it comes to you know, working out problems and incidents uh, and just providing some sort of visual feedback and context of what's going on. So what if we were to be able to start putting these, these graphs, you know, almost live information, right into uh, our chat client? Well, that, you know, the idea is with chat is just speed up and, and, and provide instru uh, instruments for measuring and sharing and you know, the automation and all that. But again, sort of a sub a byproduct of all this is that we're building this additional and better context around what's going on with our code and our infrastructure. So let's see what it looks like when we start putting these graphs into our conversations via a chatbot. So here's another example of a conversation. And in this case, we've got Hubot, who's now part of our conversation. And all of this is being conducted within a chat room where there are multiple people involved in the conversation. So let's step through this. Uh, starting at the top here, I immediately request that Hubot provide me a graph um, on a specific time frame on a specific server. So I, I make that request and Hubot hears that and immediately retrieves the graph that I'm looking for and puts that right into the chat client where everyone can see it. Um, next, I actually ping Dan and just to sort of get his attention because he may not necessarily know that I've made this request. And I say, hey Dan, are you seeing this? And Dan comes back and says, yeah. Well, what's really interesting is what happens next. 
Um, right after Dan says, yeah, Mike then chimes in and says, hey, that was just me. I just ran a report. Everything should be fine now. So here you start to see how because it's, not, it's no longer just a conversation between Dan and I, others are able to chime in and provide additional information and different uh, additional feedback that's very, very important. Again, building this context, but also speeding up things. And then in the next comment or the next chat bubble here, you'll see where Nick, again, he's our, our newest employee here at Victor Ops, Nick um, says, cool, thanks for showing me how to do that. Well, <clears throat> now it's clear that Nick has learned something. He's learned how to request a, a graph. Uh, he's also learned, you know, maybe, you know, we shouldn't always panic when we see this type of a load on a server. It might just be something uh, to do with a report that's been, being run. So <clears throat> what's important here is that Many people are part of this. There's some speed that's been added into this because I'm able to add information to the conversation in the form of a graph, um, but also other people are, you know, instead of me maybe sharing this graph via email to others and then waiting for them to respond to me in sort of a, you know, a different method like email, um, that's going to probably take a little bit more time than just pinging someone within chat client and then asking questions and letting others provide feedback. So the fact that we've got a lot more going on and in a much quicker way, you can probably start to see you know, how, this is, how this is important. But if you don't, let's talk about why this is important just in a little bit more detail. So everyone is seeing this from the minute they join VictorOps. It's all included in the team channel for everyone to see, just like what we demonstrated with Nick just by him being part of that chat client, he's learning and he's also just being part of the conversation. So there's this level of transfer transparency. So right in the middle of the conversation, we're creating this additional context. Why is context important? Well, we talk about context a lot here at VictorOps. Obviously, our goal is to make being on call suck less, and we feel that there's a lot that can be done uh, in regards to that and, and how we can you know, provide additional context is, is one big step in towards making on, being on call suck less. So nobody had to, had to do something uh, and then tell someone what they did. It's just all right there within the conversation. So again, we're building that additional context, we're speeding things up, we're sharing, and we're learning. Let's take that same conversation and see what it looks like um, within the VictorOps platform. Um, so here's an example of the previous conversation right from within uh, the service that VictorOps provides. And you can see it looks a little bit different, um, but and it's also maybe a little bit tough to read, so I, I put out just an expanded kind of blowout at the bottom there where you can see Nate, in this case, he's requested that same graph, um, and Hubot has gone out and provided it right into our timeline. What's important here is that Obviously, the same type of conversation can be had where Mike might chime in and say, that was just me running a report, and then Nick might chime in and say, hey, thanks for showing me how to do that. But at least in this um, example, what we're showing here is that the graph has been pulled in to the timeline right within not only the conversations that are going on, but also the notifications that are coming in from our monitoring services. So it's likely that maybe I was on call and that's how I was notified about some sort of spike in a CPU um, on a server and that's why I went out and, <clears throat> or in this case, Nate went out and asked for a graph. So by placing that graph in this additional context right in line and right nearby the alerts that we're getting on our infrastructure as well as who's being um, paged or alerted and then who's acknowledging this information, again, we're starting to build a more accurate and more clear picture and story around what's going on with our infrastructure. Well, that's all cool, but what if you're out and about? <clears throat> the great thing about um, chat ops is that is if you're using a chat client that is uh, available on some sort of mobile device, anything that you can do from you know, within your chat client, be it a, um, just a normal web uh, desktop application or, or browser application, can all be done from uh, mobile as well. So anything that your bot can do, you can now do from your phone. And here in Colorado, that means the world to us because we have a lot of fun things to do. We like to be out doing you know, awesome things. So we could actually be solving problems, pulling in graphs from a ski lift or from a boat or from you know, a 
a ball game. Like, there's so many different things we could be doing from essentially anywhere that we are. Collaboration, deployment, and automation of common tasks can all be done from anywhere. And this is super important. You know, you're no longer necessarily tied to your laptop or tied to the office or something like that. Anything that you can do or that your bot can do, you can do now from your phone. And this is hugely important, especially in the efforts of making on-call suck less. All right, so that sort of covers um, the tools that you're going to need, some of the benefits, and I showed you some, some sort of examples of what you could be doing. Now let's give you just a, a brief run-through of how you can get started. Now, much of what you would need to get started could be a completely different webinar. There's, you know, it's a little bit more extensive than I have time for um, here in this webinar, so I've just got sort of a brief run-through of what you can be doing, and I've provided some links as well. First of all, you're going to need a bot. Um, so you need to go out and choose which bot makes the most sense for you and then get that installed. I've got a few links here to some online instructions on how to install both Hubot and Lita. Um, so go ahead and, if you get a chance, take a look at those links. Um, maybe make a decision in terms of which uh, programming language you prefer, whether it's going to be JavaScript uh, or Ruby or even Python. But once you've made that decision, go ahead and get your bot installed. The next thing I recommend is really just sort of a recommendation in general for any kind of development, and that's to create a repo. It's always good to version control all of the code that you're developing, including uh, the scripts that you're going to be creating for whatever chatbot you end up choosing. Um, once you've done that and you've sort of got your repo ready to go, my next suggestion is going to be to go out there and take a look at some of the existing scripts um, that others have already written and provided to the community. And I've got a link there that will also take you um, to a repository where you can take a look at some of the scripts that already exist. This is a great way for you to just sort of go through and see what other people are doing. It may spark some ideas for you, but if nothing else, it's just <clears throat> good for you to go in and, and kind of uh, see what others are doing and maybe even find something that you can just download and make some slight changes to and begin using yourself. Once you've done that and you've, you've had the opportunity to kind of take a look at some existing scripts, um, you're probably ready at this point to either go ahead and modify some scripts so that they work better for you in your own environment, or maybe you're ready to start over from scratch, uh, or just start from scratch, and build your own scripts. Um, my sort of suggestion on that, obviously you're probably already starting to think of some different things that you can do for yourself. But I, I encourage you to go around and ask others in your team what it is that they're doing on a daily basis and see if there's something that you could be automating for them. You're going to be a, a, a little superhero within your team if you can find some way to speed up and automate uh, tasks that a lot of different parts of your team are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and in a more general sense, just get creative. You know, think about, like I said a couple of times this morning, think about the things that you do all the time. And, and what could you be doing to make those things automated from within your chat client? Real quick, I want to go over just some concerns and some limitations that, um, that I have thought of. You know, early on <clears throat> when I started uh, looking into chat ops and trying to understand it and digest what this whole thing means, I kind of had this idea and I felt that automating too much might actually disconnect people from how to perform tasks. I know for me personally, when I've taken a step away from doing any kind of development, um, whether you know, that's in Ruby or PHP uh, or JavaScript or whatever the, the case is, when I haven't done that for a while and then I come back and I'm ready to dive right in and start hacking away and, and build something cool, it actually takes me a little bit of time to sort of, you know, knock out the cobwebs and, and sort of refresh my memory on how to do a lot of different things. And I feel like that's the same, that, you know, it's a similar concern that might be, um, or that one might have when it comes to chat ops. Now that we're automating so much of what's being done, are we going to forget how to do these things? And is that important if there comes a time when, for whatever reason, the bot isn't available or the bot isn't working? or you know, some other sort of catastrophic situation where we just can't rely on that bot anymore, <clears throat> and now you need to be able to do something manually. Are you going to be in a position where you actually remember how to do that? 
And I've asked a lot of people this the same question. I've asked Jesse Newland at GitHub. Uh, I've asked a, a, a number of people uh, at a lot of different companies that I've, I've worked uh, or I've had conversations with and, and met with people around the country, and almost all of them come back with the same sort of response, and that's that they all agree that there really isn't a concern. And it's mostly because the steps that you, or at least myself, fear that I might be forgetting, well, they're all very well documented. They're all right within the scripts, and those scripts should always be available. So if you find yourself in the situation where you do have to do something manually, the scripts are right there for you to reference um, so that you can just still do it manually um, yourself and hopefully you know, still get it um, taken care of in a timely manner. And in this, uh, this screenshot I had here, it was actually uh, kind of interesting. As I was building this deck uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, I noticed that someone had reached out to Mark Embriaco, who, uh, for, you know, formerly with GitHub, I don't believe he's with GitHub anymore, but he was instrumental as well as Jesse in this whole sort of chat ops movement, and you'll be able to find a number of presentations from Mark online as well, uh, mostly regarding Hubot and what they were doing at, at GitHub. And this question came up of, uh, with chat ops in the real world, did you ever have issues um, with a dependency on a third-party system like Campfire? And Mark comes back and says that yes, we did, or sorry, yes, that we did, uh, but we always make our chat ops commands uh, standalone executable. Uh, so that's something else you, you might want to consider when you're, you're creating these scripts is that, um, you know, there's more and more, there's always new chat clients coming out. I mentioned kind of three of the more uh, popular ones at the time, but you can guarantee that there's going to be, there's always going to be more uh, coming out in the future. So maybe um, not sort of painting yourself into a corner with a specific chat client might be a wise, uh, a wise choice, but also making it so that these scripts can be executed on their own without, uh, without a bot. Yeah. In addition to concerns, I often ask people what sort of limitations have they ever found? Um, you know, and I've talked to a lot of different people, and I keep bringing up Jesse uh, from, from GitHub. He's been great. We've had a number of conversations about the topic of chat ops, and I, I asked him in one conversation we had, what's the coolest thing or what's the, just the most impressive thing you've ever been able to do uh, with chat ops? And he told me a story of uh, one morning he was heading into the GitHub offices on his bike, and he received a notice that there was a DDoS attack on on GitHub, and so from within his Campfire mobile application on his phone, he was actually able to just trigger off a three or, word, uh, three or four word command that triggered a DDoS mitigation script. And so from his bicycle on some street in San Francisco, he was actually, to, uh, he was actually able to take a very, very powerful action that helped stop this DDoS attack on GitHub. So right there you can start to see uh, that's a pretty powerful thing that you can be doing right from your phone. So by and large, when I ask this question of what limitations are there, <coughs> excuse me, most people agree that there are very limitations. You just need to use your imagination. If, if a script doesn't exist for something you want to do, you just need to go out there and create it. So, with that said, um, I'd like to just sort of kind of pose this question out there is, <clears throat> what is it you're doing with chat ops? I'm very much a student of this topic and learning uh, as much as I can about it, and I love hearing what others are doing. So, please send me an email or connect with me on Twitter and let me know what kind of chat ops you're doing in your organization, as well as any questions you might have. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to leave, the, uh, leave you just one more thing. You know, we've been talking about having robots around helping us with our day-to-day -day for uh, literally decades. We've implemented these robots into manufacturing and other aspects of our life. Obviously, we have uh, mobile phones now that have things like Siri built into them, which are you know, more or less just a bot that's hopefully going to help us with <coughs> excuse me, things like checking weather and traffic and finding information on the web for us. <clears throat> so we've already started uh, using these bots. Now it's time to get these bots into our conversations regarding infrastructure, uh, code, and you know, all kinds of things that are related to our day-to-day -day business. So we finally have these bots 
and they're available to us. I think it's time that we start taking advantage of it. <coughs> Excuse me, really bad tickle in my throat. So with that said, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to our webinar. If you happen to have any questions, uh, feel free to just email me at jason at victorops.com or you can reach me on Twitter at Jason Hand. And I've also started to, to develop this uh, <clears throat> sort of a curated site regarding different subjects on ChatOps. Much of what you'll find in this uh, webinar today will be provided on chatops.me. Uh, in addition to that, we'll also start <clears throat> getting some guest blog posts and a lot of just different valuable content regarding ChatOps. So please pay attention to chatops.me if you'd like to find out some more information. I've also got links to some additional resources on that site. Um, but with that said, uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me. And I appreciate you taking the time to sit in with us and discuss chat ops. Um, so with that said, I'm going to move on to our last slide here. <clears throat> um, in December, we're actually going to be teaming up with our friends at AppDynamics and doing another webinar <clears throat> on the topic of new age monitoring and alerting. So if that's something of interest to you, I ask you to uh, mark that on your calendar. We'll be sending out um, invitations to register for that very soon, so maybe reach out to me if that's of interest to you. Um, <clears throat> you can also download the ChatOps Toolkit um, <clears throat> as, far as, uh, or as well as an introduction to the ChatOps, DevOps meets IM. Uh, that's all going to be available, and there's also a link down there where you can see the ChatOps and the VictorOps platform. <clears throat> so, with that all said, uh, if you're not familiar with VictorOps, I encourage you to try it out. It's free for two weeks. A lot of this stuff is sort of very, very much um, already baked into the VictorOps platform. Hubot is already available uh, and built into, built into VictorOps platform, so uh, we can sort of speed up your entry level into the world of chat ops if, uh, if that's something of interest to you. And uh, I think that will pretty much wrap it up for today. So again, thank you for attending and listening to the webinar. Uh, I encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions or comment, and um, we will hopefully talk to you again really soon. Thank you. Bye.